one how you doing it's paul here from unusual things now today i've brought you to a little village called minstead which is in the new forest in hampshire so not too far from me probably about a half an hour drive from where i live and uh today we've come here to see and find the gravestone of sir arthur conan doyle now sir arthur conan doyle as you may know wrote sherlock holmes and in his younger years um, he also started out training as a physician now he was born on the 22nd of may 1859 up in edinburgh i say up in edinburgh because we're down on the south coast of course it's a beautiful day here look at that behind me it's gorgeous amazing and he died on the 7th of july um, 1930 in Crowborough. Now, as well as his books, of course, the Sherlock Holmes books and many others, um, like I say, he was, he was training to be a physician in Southsea in um, Portsmouth, which is where I live. And um, apparently he, he wasn't the best one ever. So he used to sit and write um, short stories and of course created Sherlock Holmes. Now, coming away from his love of writing, though he became interested in spiritualism as early as 1886, and he read a book written by the US High Court's judge, John Worth Edmonds. And he was one of the most influential early American spiritualists who claimed that after the death of his wife, he had been able to communicate with her. Now, Edmonds was also, had also met with the um, Fox sisters, known as the Rochester Knockers, and Doyle appreciated his account of the girl's communication with spirits. And when Doyle was practicing as a physician in Southsea, he participated in something called table turning, um, where he, the sittings at one of the patient's homes. And that really got him into his spiritualist. And he also wrote books on it as well. And I think, <laughs> this, is, this is funny. And I'll tell you why this is funny, because it's a, one of those beanie bears and it's got the Portsmouth emblem on it. Now we're in Southampton. So for those of you that don't know, Portsmouth and Southampton football teams are um, not the friendliest. It's like a local derby, so they're, they're not always the friendliest with each other. So for someone to leave that is probably just a bit of bit of fun, you know. Anyway, I believe this is his grave. There's a spyglass and a pipe there. Let's have a look, it's getting close. Still true, laid straight. Is that what it says? I'm just, just struggling. Yeah, still true, laid straight. Arthur Conan Doyle, knight, patriot physician, and man of letters. 22nd of May, 1859 to 7th of July, 1930. And his beloved, his wife, Jean Conrad Doyle, reunited on 27th of June, 1940. Now, as Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was a spiritualist, and apparently after he died, he left instructions for people to try and contact him. Um, for those of you that don't know, I've been investigating the paranormal since 2003, so a long, long time. So I thought it would be rude today not to bring some paranormal equipment with me. And while it's early and it's quiet, We'll, um, we'll see if we can make some contact, shall we? It's not being disrespectful, and I'll tell you why it's not being disrespectful, because in his will when he passed, or the instructions he left, was he wanted people to try and contact him. Now, I know that was a long time ago, and that was back then, but hey, he was a spiritualist, he's into that sort of thing. I'm into the paranormal, and the show's got unusual things with Paul. What's more unusual? trying to contact with Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. The great novelist that wrote Sherlock Holmes. It has to be done. I love the fact that there's the pipe there and the magnifying glass. So I've got a REM pod here. 
thing picks up if it gives off what you call EMF. It's got electromagnetic force around it. The same as this one here, if it goes near any, um, if anything breaks the field within it, the lights will go off. So we're gonna put that there. So now I've also got my dictaphone with me, which records EVP, electronic voice phenomenon. And um, it's a great way of communicating with spirits. We've got the two machines, the REM pod and the um, K2 meter over on the grave there. Now I'm being mindful, it is early in the morning, but people will still come around and wonder what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> so this, um, will record any voices or sounds that, that we can't hear. So, so Arthur Conan Doyle or any other spirits that are present, can you speak into this? Can you tell me your name? Can you tell me if the paranormal world exists? Can you make one of those machines go off? Make the lights go off? Especially Arthur Conan Doyle, as he had this massive belief in the paranormal. I'm going to leave this here for a minute while I just talk to camera, because you never know, things do happen. Okay. That was me. That was me making it go off then with my hand. Right. For those of you that don't know, the one thing about the paranormal is it takes a long, long time. I've been sat in many places, in the dark, in the cold, for hours and hours, and you might only get one little bit, but that's what it's all about. But anyway, today, we're not necessarily here for a paranormal investigation, of course. We're here to visit the grave of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. But while you're here, and there's someone there that had this belief, in spiritualism, the afterlife, and who wrote books on it and done table turning and just did so much, then I think out of respect, if anything, we have to try and communicate with him. So I've left the um, EVP, electronic voice phenomena, dictaphone, machine down there. And you never know, I won't listen to it now, but I'll listen to it later and if I hear anything, then obviously I will put that in the video so that you guys can um, can have a listen too. Wow, so Arthur Conan Doyle, Sherlock Holmes. Apparently as well, when um, he got bored of Sherlock Holmes at one point and he killed him off and the fans just kicked off. Even back then, the fans kicked off. Um, and he had to bring him back after three years because um, people were just angry with him and really annoyed the fact that he he got rid of Sherlock Holmes. And it's a good job he did bring him back, really, because you look at all the films and all the adaptations, that, the different programmes that people have made um, from that. You know, I'm sure he'll be very, very happy with that as well. Now, it doesn't look like we're getting any reaction on any of the... Um, machines, monitors, whatever you want to call them. REM pod and K2 is their proper name. But anyway, so it doesn't look like we're getting anything on there. We may get something on the EVP, the vo electronic voice phenomena. I don't know. But I can't stand here all day because it can take hours. And obviously, people will start coming around soon and wondering what the hell I'm doing. And it's gone it's gone so I'm having to come back and just do it again because I don't know where the hell that's gone it was recording it was showing me it was recording and it's just disappeared <laughs> spooky so Arthur Conan Doyle right there author spiritualist 
medical man. Now, speaking, speaking, speaking of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle being a medical man and a spiritualist, there's a big contradiction there. And the contradiction is not between me or him or whoever. However, scientists, scientists and people that believe in spiritualism and ghosts and ghouls and spirits and things like that have healthy debates. <laughs> well, some do anyway. And the reason why I know this is back in 2000, well, like I told you, I've been investigating the paranormal since 2003, so nearly 20 years now. I've done lots of investigations, I've seen lots of things, I've heard lots of things, but I still keep an open mind. I still keep a healthy, open mind as to whether it's paranormal or if something's just rattling around in a house or making noises. But the biggest thing for me is EVPs, the electronic voice phenomenon. When you hear voices that we can't hear with our ears, but you hear it on a recorded device, device where's that come from? That's what makes my brain go, whoa. Anyway, like I was saying, back in 2008, I presented a paranormal radio show. And it was great because we had both sides of the debate on there. We had the scientists and we had the paranormal believers, the spiritualists, the mediums. And it was great. It was good, healthy conversation. Um, and I'm sure we've all had that conversation before with people, haven't we? Do you believe in ghosts? Yes or no? And um, it's, it's an area that's always open-ended until we get proof, if we ever do. Anyway, church is open. I'll probably disappear if I walk in there. Don't forget to leave your comments down below. Let me know your thoughts and feelings. Are you a believer? Are you a non-believer? Um, you know, are you a fan of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle? Did you like his work? Did you love his work? And also, what are your thoughts on ghosts and ghouls? Not ghouls, but ghosts and spirits. Anyway, that's it for me today. I will... Uh, See you all soon. Until the next one, take care. Bye-bye.